So today we're going to be talking about toll houses. Hello everyone and God bless. Uh, this is Father Mikhail, Father Michael, with another episode of Living Orthodox. And as you might notice, there might be a slight improvement in audio quality. There might be a slight improvement in video quality. And uh, so thank you to my uh, generous Patreon donors. I have been able to start getting some slightly better equipment to try and improve the quality of the videos that I am making and uploading for all of you. And hopefully this just helps to further the, the content and the message of the channel and makes it more um, accessible to many of you. So with that said, uh, let's begin. There have been many uh, YouTube videos that have come out over the years. Um, there are some who defend the toll houses, such as Father Cosmas of Australia. There are some who have uh, who've defended it and who have given a, a good overview of it, such as David Erhan. Um, Raphael of Orthodox Review also reviewed the book that I'm largely using as, uh, as the, the, uh, the main source of material for this program, which is actually, it's a compendium of everything uh, from the patristic writings and from the hymnography to the iconography of the church, including a full list of the errors uh, and um, outright misrepresentations of Lazar Pujalo and Father Michael Azkul in their detractions against the toll houses, and where their views are alien to the patristic consensus of the church. So, with that said, if you're interested in the soul after death, check out St. Anthony's Greek Orthodox Monastery. The book is right here. And I will include a link to purchase this book and the Reader's Digest version in the description. To name some of the, the channels, and this isn't done to incite uh, people going into their comments and attacking them and calling them heretics or saying, you know, you're wrong. I don't want you doing that. I'm saying this for educational purposes and to highlight where the errors are. Boyan of Bible Illustrated had a video on the toll houses in which he states that he believes that they're either Theologumenon or potentially a, uh, a pagan belief that made its way into the church, and this is simply not so. Now, he made this video many years ago, so maybe Boyan's views have changed on this since then, but un until one can further ascertain uh, what he actually believes on the toll houses, the video still remains up and still remains in error. Boyan makes the erroneous claim that, uh, and he, for one, uh, very pejoratively refers to anyone upholding that the toll houses are doctrines uh, and dogmatic, which would be attacking other saints that actually do espouse them, such as Saint Joseph the Hesychast, contemporaries such as Yerinda Ephrem. Many saints talk about the toll houses, and as a result, we shouldn't be disregarding and saying that they're accepting these merely out of humility and they're accepting spurious teachings. The problem is, is with this line of thinking, this allows for other modernistic cancerous thoughts to come in and to corrupt us and to tell us, oh, well, perhaps our views on certain sacraments are, are a little bit inflated. Maybe they're, they're this or that moral issue doesn't really matter that much. The problem is, is that when you take one thing out, when you chip away at a part of the foundation, the whole structural integrity will become weaker with time. And so for him to claim that, uh, you know, uh, people are toll house worshippers is again that that alone is a spurious claim but you know again god love him he 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 does his best with what he has but to claim that the whole of orthodox hymnography iconography and 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 the the prayers of the church don't contain more than maybe just a couple mentions of them here and there is completely categorically false this is why i never recommend his channel for catechumens and converts as much as I like the guy and, and you know there were times in the past when I was converting I watched him but even then when I saw that toll house video I thought hmm something's wrong here so I'm gonna go over a point by point video here and this is going to be an entire series and so I'm going to largely cover scripture and commentary on scriptures pertaining to the toll houses from the Holy Fathers and then I'm going to go over a little bit in terms of hymnography from the Octoikos, the tones read in church. And I'm also going to go over some of the Akathist prayers. And I'm going to go over more liturgical ones in the next 
video, as well as the writings of the Holy Fathers and the accounts of saints. And we're essentially going to go through uh, probably a three to four part series defending the toll houses and why this teaching should not cause you to be afraid. You know, to, to use emotional appeals is, is something that we must be very careful of. And of course, before I continue on any further, we're not surprised. The other detractions against the toll houses come from Theoria, Ben Cabe who says, you know, well, we can't be sure to what extent, to, to how, again, don't listen to this kind of lawyering. It's just legalism. You have to draw the line in the sand and say, look, if you're going to say that about this, what else can we say this about? What, where else does it stop? And people go, oh, this is the slippery slope. The slippery... Take any argument. Take any argument. And somebody's going to have an objection to that argument, and they're going to use some kind of category to describe it as being and not a good argument because you know why they don't want to agree with it and I'll, I'll tell you this if you're watching this and you're going oh, well the toll houses I don't know if I like that it doesn't matter what you like what matters is true what matters is that we empty ourselves we humble ourselves and we look at what is being said the fruits that can come of it and why this is so important why this helps us to actually take better account why understanding the 20 demonic stations of the toll houses allows us to better examine ourselves, our sins, and the sources of our temptations, and to remember death, and to motivate ourselves to avoid falling into the same sins again. Because the, the, the reality of the next life that awaits us is quite uh, expansive, it's, it's quite mysterious, and there's a lot of peril, but there's also a lot of reward. So for scripture in commentary, our, our first one comes from John 14, 30, the Gospel of John, where, he said, where Jesus says, Hereafter I will not walk much with you, for the ruler of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So this refers to the trial of the soul after death. And St. Basil the Great says this in response, I think that the noble athletes of God who have wrestled considerably with the invisible enemies during the whole of their lives, after they have escaped all of their persecutions and reached the end of life, are examined by the prince of the world, in order that if they are found to have wounds from wrestling or any stains or effects of sin, they may be detained. But if they are found wounded and stainless, unwounded and stainless, forgive me, they may be brought by Christ into their rest as being unconquered and free. So that's, that's very important for us to note that this came from the mouth of St. Basil the Great. And when we read the life of St. Basil the New, which Sori Boyan is included in the Synexarion, it's included in the lives of the saints. And if we're going to start saying, oh, this is just a fan fiction, how many martyrs and saints will people say this about when they want to disprove something, when something makes them a little uncomfortable? We have to ask ourselves that question every single time. We have to draw the line. St. Gregory, the diologist, the Pope of Rome, who reposed in 604. So, you know, for some of you who might go, oh, the Pope, the Pope, this is pre-schism. This is pre-schism. St. Gregory, the diologist says this, then will the wicked spirits look for their own works in the soul as it goes forth. Then they will unfold the evil deeds that persuaded it to commit so that they can drag it down with them to torment. But why am I speaking of only evil souls? The wicked spirits may come also to the elect as they depart this life, seeking something of their own in them, if they are strong enough to do so. He then references Christ and the aforementioned verse. And so we, we have to, again, go, hmm, hmm. What, what do we see in the life of St. Basil the New? Well, re referring to what St. Basil the Great said about how if the effects of sin or a wound are found within the soul of the person who's being tried by the aerial spirits, <clears throat> aerial toll houses, right? It just describes where these specific spirits conglomerate in association with passions and sins um, in the toll house there, that when they detain a soul, they, they, you know, they hold on to it when they find something of their own in there. And we see that in the life of St. Basil the New. St. Maximus the Confessor on the same verse from John 14.30 says this, He triumphed over them and made a spectacle of them in his cross at the departure of his soul. 
when the evil powers could find nothing at all culpable in the possibility proper to his human nature. St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain, who reposed in 1809 and wrote many works, such as the, uh, the new uh, re-released copy of Ex Homo Legaterion, which is the Manual of Confession, a must-read for all priests, in my opinion, and laymen, it can help you make a good confession. He also wrote many other things, uh, his Confession of Faith, Frequent Communion, and of course, most notably, the Rudder, which is the traditional accepted interpre interpretations and applications of the Holy Canons. So St. Maximus the Confessor, you know, uh, St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain says this, both angelic powers and a multitude of demons come to meet the soul and examine each person's deeds. They can't stand to see humans inheriting the former dwelling place, their former dwelling place in heaven, while they themselves inherit the dark Hades and the eternal fire of hell. Moving on to Luke, Luke 12, 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night they will require thy soul. Then whose shall those things be when thou hast, which thou hast provided? So again, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night they shall require thy soul, or will require your soul. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? St. Theophactolos of Valkyrid and Bulgaria said this, he said, See that the Lord did not say, I shall require thy soul of thee. But they, they as in the demons of the toll houses, shall require thy soul of thee. Ephesians 6, 12, which I know Boyan included in his video, and he said, oh, they just take these two verses to mean this one from Matthew and one from Ephesians. No, there's actually many more in this book that I've actually omitted because they're so numerous that I would have an entire video just to the scripture side alone of it. And if that's something you guys would like me to go back and do, and we want to treat this as a preliminary kind of introduction to the topic, we can. Let me know in the comments. If you really want me to do an exhaustive read-through of all the scriptural and commentary proofs for the toll houses, I, I'm willing to do that. I might not do every single one, but I will do it. <laughs> so Ephesians 6.12 for we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual host of evil in heavenly places. St. John of Damascus has this to say. And in a sense, they hold the soul and present all of its sins committed in knowledge and ignorance from its youth until the age it was taken. Now, as well in that video, we, we hear this claim that very few prayers contain any mentioning of the toll houses. I have here the Jordanville prayer book, right? The, the, uh, the prayer book produced by Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville, New York. Hence why we call it the Jville sometimes or the Jordanville prayer book. It's kind of a standard edition for many Orthodox Christians. Um, there are, of course, much more elaborate prayer books in terms of page layout and design. But this one has some of the most beautiful language and has a great selection of canons and prayers. And um, this little excerpt in particular that I'm going to read to you comes from the, uh, the prayer to the Holy Guardian Angel. And so here he says, uh, the prayer says this. Um, and in the terrible hour of death, be not far from me, my good guardian, driving away the demons of darkness who have the power to terrify my trembling soul. Defend me from their net when I shall pass through the aerial toll houses, in order that being guarded by thee, I may attain the desired paradise, where the choirs of the saints and the celestial host unceasingly praise the all-honorable and majestic name and trinity of God, glorified the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to whom is due all honor and worship unto the ages of ages. Amen. So there's, there's one. But let's go back to liturgical points. Now, again, I did not include all the liturgical reference points in this book because, as you can see, this book is over a thousand pages, and I've already read well over a hundred pages to even just put this video together. I've read a hundred and... Uh, get to it. I've read 121 pages to get to this point in this video. 
So just to give you an idea of how much I've had to omit, and I'm just taking kind of highlight points. And like I said, I can do more expanding on things. Like I said, I can't promise I'm going to do every single thing by the book. Um, but here, here, let's start with liturgical ones. So from the service at the parting of the soul from the body, Ode 3. Noetic roaring lions have surrounded me, seeking to carry me away and bitterly torment me. Do thou crush their teeth and jaws, O pure one, and save me. So that's, of course, a reference to the Epistle of St. Peter, which he describes the devil as a lion, a roaring lion, who's, who's seeking prey to devour. From the Midnight Office for Sunday and Monday, Orthros, first tone. And in the and this is a, an excerpt. And in the fearful time of my death, free me from the accusing demons, and the dreadful verdict. Vespers, Friday evening, second tone. When my soul shall be forcibly separated from the members of my body, do thou stand by my side, O Bride of God, dispersing the designs of the bodiless adversaries, and crushing the teeth of them that seek to devour me cruelly, so that I may pass without hindrance through the rulers of darkness standing in the air. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty telling. Now let's skip ahead to the Akathist. The Akathist prayer specifically to Holy Apostle St. John the Theologian says this, At the end of our ephemeral life, help us. Help us avoid, O Holy Apostle, the merciless tortures which await us in the aerial toll houses, so that with you as our guide and patron we will reach the upper Jerusalem in the glory of which you beheld in Revelation, and now rejoice in the joy promised to those chosen by God. And uh, some of these uh, Akathists, and I'm about to read to you some of these Akathist prayers, come from the book of Akathists, which are um, they're often included in the service of Compline of the Day of a Saint's Annual Commemoration. They're intended to be read by the faithful during the hour of private prayer. It's a, it comes from the centuries-old Slavonic Akathisminik, the book of Akathist, which uh, has numerous references to the toll houses. And it was recently reprinted. Right here it says, By the Kiev Caves Lavra, with the blessing of His Holiness Alexei II, Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia. Hmm. Hmm. A patriarch signing off on this. So let me, let me read to you the prayer to the Holy Theotokos. And this comes from the Akathist to the icon of the Most Holy Mother of God, the Inexhaustible Cup. Protect us and keep us from the net of the evil one and all the snares of enemies and at the dreadful hour of our departure. Help us to pass through the aerial toll houses without stumbling. By thy prayers deliver us from eternal condemnation that the mercy of God may protect us unto the endless ages of ages. Amen. From the Akathist to Archangel Michael, attributed to His Holiness Isidore I, Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. From the tempest of temptations and dangers, do thou deliver us who with love and joy celebrate thy most radiant festival of foremost of the angels. For thou art a great helper in misfortune, and at the hour of death a guardian and intercessor against evil spirits. For all that cry to thee in our Master and God, Alleluia. And that's the fourth Kentuckian. Then the prayer says this, Holy and great Archangel Michael of God, uh, Holy and great Archangel of God, Michael, when the hour of our end and the liberation from the bonds of this body of clay draweth nigh, O Archangel of God, leave us not defenseless against the spirits of evil in the upper air, who are accustomed to hinder the ascent of man's soul on high, that guarded by thee we may attain without hindrance those most glorious dwelling places of paradise. Hmm. We have one to the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Luke. O Holy and Most Lauded Apostle and Evangelist Luke, earthly angel and heavenly man, at the dread hour of our death, stand before us as one who fendeth off the dark visages of the demons and strengtheneth our hope of salvation. Prayer to Hero Martyr Cyprian. Holy, and this comes, uh, and, and again, this is from the Akathist prayer to Holy Hero Martyr Cyprian. O holy favorite of God, hear a martyr Cyprian, speedy helper and advocate for all who have recourse unto thee. Grant us patient amid temptations, and at the hour of our death, show us thy help against those who will interrogate us in the aerial toll houses that, led by thee, 
we may attain unto the heavenly Jerusalem and be vouchsafed with all the saints in the kingdom of heaven to glorify in him thy holy name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit unto ages of ages. Amen. There's also many to St. George, Holy Hierarch Basil, St. Nicholas of Myra, all sorts of people who... You know, we even have one from the Akathist to the, uh, to the Lesna icon of the Mother of God. So, if, uh, you know, and, and I'll partially judge this on feedback, but I'm planning for the next video to be an overview of the writings of the saints on this matter. So if you're interested, you can purchase this book, The Departure of the Soul, from St. Anthony's Greek Orthodox Monastery. It's an absolute brick. Or you can purchase a much more streamlined version called the same title, The Departure of the Soul, Reader's Edition. I will also include the link to purchase this one. So with that said, brothers and sisters, remember that of course not everything on the internet is a trustworthy source of orthodoxy and more than anything if it's not coming from a priest or from a deacon and if it's coming from laymen who do not specify their blessings or who are probably just new well-intentioned and maybe just are speaking too quickly off the top of their heads question things ask yourself why has the church held this for so long why why does it appear in the synaxarium why does this account appear in the lives of saints why is it actually in far more places than what you're being told it is in? And that's because they've been told lies. So that's, that's why I also said, don't go to their comments and start attacking them, bombarding them, saying, Father Michael said you're wrong. I said they're wrong about this. I said that they're incorrect on this. Benjamin Cave, Bible Illustrated, there was a talk from St. Barnabas's uh, Orthodox Church, uh, where a priest there gave a talk on, on the toll houses and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a good priest, but he uh, he made the claim that, you know, it's not anywhere in our liturgics. And, well, I just can't help but wonder how many liturgical service books have been read when we have an entire reference edition that shows every place that the, the, the toll houses and the trial of the soul and the testing that it undergoes from the Prince of Darkness contains. It's, it's all, there's hundreds, thousands of pages of references to this. So you have to be responsible for your own orthodoxy. You have to do your homework a little bit here. You know, of course, we priests should be catechizing well. We should be preparing you well, teaching you well. We should be homilizing on things like this and using it as an opportunity to help you not just remember death and remember your judgment, but to acutely assess yourselves, to be able to teach you how to have a good enough formation of your conscience to be able to give yourself a proper examination before confession. You know, th this is why this stuff is so important. And of course, it reminds us to always pray for our loved ones long after they've departed. And yes, Orthodox prayers for the dead can only be prayed for Orthodox Christians. It is dishonest to name someone as a servant of God if they were not an Orthodox Christian, if they were an atheist, if they upheld heresies like the Protestants and the Catholics which are specifically falsehoods against our Lord. You know, we can't lie and say, remember, O God, the servant of God, who faithfully served you, who communed on your mystery. No, we don't believe they did. We don't believe they did. That's why we don't even say memory eternal. You know, vichnaya pamyat, memory eternal, really does pertain to what, to who and where that memory eternal can only be obtained, and that is within the Orthodox Church, and that is flowing from the grace and mercy of God. And not all of us will be worthy of, of memory eternal. Many of us will fall, for this is the narrow path. And it's easy for us to fall to the extreme left of the patristic path and deny this, this doctrine, this absolute truth. And it can also fall to us to fall onto such a far end of the right of it that we start looking for references to it in places where they shouldn't be. I've seen people do this. They will they will hear something and they go, does this mean this? Is this obscure thing mentioned in, in prophecy or in scripture referring to this? No, no. You know, if you're asking this and no saint is supporting what you're saying, there's a problem. There's a problem. And the problem isn't with the saints. The problem is in here. 
and we have to address that problem first and foremost. So remember to say your prayers. Remember to prepare to receive communion as often as you can. Make good confessions. Don't abuse the sacrament and always be accountable. And, and remember that if you're not accountable, God will hold you accountable. So with that said, dear ones, next uh, the next episode on the toll houses, which I plan to bring up next week, will be a further expansion of the prayers and liturgical references and then moving into the Holy Fathers. May everyone have a blessed night. And thanks for watching.